The global economy, according to scholars, is now in an era of historic complexity where point focus simply failed to capture the range of potential outcomes. In furtherance of this, prudent macroeconomic policies can result in low and stable inflation. Hence, the need to discuss the effect of sound macroeconomic policy on economic slowdown. Hello and welcome to Let's Talk. My name is Oluja Kemosoko and my guest is Mr. Shola Obuni, Lead Advisor, Finance Risk Advisors Limited. But before we delve into the program proper, as usual, I would like to remind you to please subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on all of our social media platforms. Until then, enjoy the ride with us. Thank you so much, Mr. Oguni, for coming on the show. It's nice having you. Thank you very much for having me. Good afternoon from here. <laughs> so what is a macroeconomic policy and economic um, meltdown and uh, economic slowdown? Thank you. Uh, I think before we define uh, macroeconomic policy, I think it, it feels good to explain what a policy is. You know, a policy is, is a set of uh, strategies, plan of action that some people put in place to arrive at a, uh, at a derived action or at a specific point in time. And so it, a policy direction has starting point, it asks implementation, it asks monitoring, it asks feedback. So macroeconomic policy is those set of policy that government put together to, to, to influence the economic activities within an economy. And uh, it's quite different from micro. Microeconomic policy, from the word microeconomics, are those policies that do with individuals, household, company, businesses. You know, you are trying to discover what is the price for this particular commodity. How do I hire my, my staff? How much do I sell? What does it cost me to do something like this? Those are the things the uh, micro covers. But macro is this with the, uh, when you're looking at the variables on the aggregate, as in, take for instance, Nigeria or United States, if a company is trying to fix their price, for instance, that is microeconomics. Or they are considering whether to hire, whether to lay off, that is microeconomics. But when the uh, Central Bank of U.S., the Federal Reserve System, for instance, they say, okay, we want to raise interest rates, that is macro. So macro deal with the economy on the aggregate. And it talked about something like uh, monetary policy, fiscal policy, exchange rate policy, uh, trade policy, international trade. Do you understand? So that is macro. And you ask, ask for a, a slowdown. So yeah. it's just like a graph. Uh, we understand the slowdown when we understand a, a, an expansion. So when economic activities, goods and services are increasing, maybe this year the economy produces, uh, uh, let's say, $1 trillion. And next year, they produce more than that. That is an expansion. So a slowdown is when there is a significant, a widespread significant reduction in economic activities across board. That is, that is uh, a slowdown. And uh, you can have a slowdown which is another name for a recession, which, which technically means a, a, two, a, a two quarter successful slowdown, slow, uh, slowdown in an economy, a recession. But as you are slowing down, you can actually get to the depth of the slowdown. And that is called uh, a depression. You know, you are moving, coming down, coming down, coming down, when you get to the bottom, but we don't really know when they get to the bottom. That is a depression. When you are moving up again, you can call it expansion, we can call it recovery. And when you get to that top, that is like, like a peak, like a plateau. So slow down a reduction in the economic activities, widespread economic activities in an economy. Then expansion is when those economic activities picked up. 
Thank you so much for that. Now, uh, what is now the goal of macroeconomic policy when it comes to business, world economy, and all sorts? Okay, so the goals of microeconomics policy are quite uh, uh, elaborate. But as I said, microeconomic policy tends to kind of influence the direction of economy. So you actually fall under two. One, that's what we call stabilization policy. Another one is growth policy. So for a developing economy like Nigeria or some other emerging market, for instance, they could set a target for them, for themselves, and say, okay, in the next, in the next five years, we want to be growing at a real GDP rate of, let's say, 5%. That's the goal. That over the next five years, we want to grow 5% every year or 10 years. That's a growth policy. Then you can have a stabilization policy. Stabilization policy tends to, like, you know, balance things up within an economy. An economy can overheat. And when an economy is overheating, you'll be seeing inflation rising up, prices are rising, uh, uh, firms don't have more people to employ, that is, the, the labor market is tight, for instance, and everything is just booming. So the economy is operating close to what we call its potential, potential GDP, its potential. So all resources are taken up. If something like that happens, if government does not want inflation to be rising, they can stabilize it. So you have stabilization policy within maybe within a year, six months to stabilize things. When things are falling, you raise it up. When they are running too faster, you cool them down. So the goals basically is influence the direction of the economy for prosperity, for equity. For the for, for, for the entire people. So microeconomic policy main goal is to ensure that the economy is operating well, is is prosperous for everybody. Everybody will not be uh, will not have equal something. But when the economy is prosperous enough, a lot of people tend to uh get by. I don't know if that's uh Okay. Thank you so much for that. And uh, now thank you. I believe that there are pillars of economic macroeconomic policy. Yeah. So I want you to explain those pillars and how they can be helpful. The pillars of microeconomic policy, as I said, one, uh, you look at monetary policy and fiscal policy. So for the fiscal policy, for instance, that tends to do with how much government wants to spend, that is the budget, how much they want to earn in taxes, how much they want to spend, then monetary policy tend to do with government action through their central bank on influencing the direction of the economy. Both of them are influencing the e economy. So like uh, you, how, how much interest rates to charge, how do, they, how do they control inflation, how do they control price stability, how do they move towards, uh, uh, what's it called, move towards... Uh, uh, maximum em employment for instance so those are the those are the key aspects so when you are looking at the core pillars you ensure that okay what is happening to the, the unemployment what level will be okay for us what should be our inflation inflation target what should be the trade policy what should be the exchange rate policy those are the pillars you know you want to talk about the exchange rate policy uh 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 monetary policy we want to talk about budget how much do we earn should we have a budget surplus should we have a budget deficit should we have a, a balanced budget those are the pillars and those pillars are to ensure that things are working fine you want to ensure that your economy is, is not overheating as it's also not underperforming so the key pillar as i said you look at your monetary policy you look at your uh fiscal policy you look at your exchange rate policy you look at your trade policy so in those from those four key policies you, you have your pillars in the in the fiscal policy you want to ensure that okay government is spending where to encourage uh, employment government is also spending where to encourage fiscal infrastructure provision of public goods you understand to ensure that at least private creating an enabling environment for private sector to thrive those are the 
angle of the fiscal policy. For the monetary policy, you want to ensure that, okay, our exchange rate is not in a misalignment. You want to ensure that, okay, our exchange rate is not overvalued. It's not undervalued. Okay, we have exports potentials. Should we ensure that our goods are cheap, like China used to do? So, so sometimes they still do it, you know, to ensure that China can export a lot. And for them to be competitive, if their goods are good, if their products are okay, what do they do? Okay, if the exchange rate is low, as in you, 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 you require uh, less dollar to get more yuan. So goods in China are cheaper. So you'll be buying things from, the, from China. So those are those, again, monetary policy, fiscal policy, exchange rate policy, and uh, your trade policy. Your trade policy has to do with what your interaction with the rest of the world. Should we ask what you export? What is our comparative advantage? Should we should we set up? Should because should we set up? Should we should we tell people to come and set up in our country, or should we just create a kind of uh, outsourcing feed in our country, or should we focus on foreign direct investment, or should we just focus on foreign portfolio investment? Because when you have an FDI, for instance, you are telling investors to bring their money and take a proper risk in the economy. You know they will set up technology transfer, technology know how. Those are the key policies. I don't know if that. Uh, uh, Yes, that that's answers it. Yeah, okay. Thank you so much for that. Let's quickly go on this break. We will be right back. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, the program is Let's Talk on DNT Work. And I've been speaking with Mr. Shola Uboni. He is the lead advisor, Finance Risk Advisors Limited. The topic has been effect of sound macroeconomic policy on economic slowdown. So enjoy the ride with us as we continue to discuss this wonderful topic. Thank you once again for standing by, Mr. Shola. Thank you very much. Now, with that being said, what effect does sound macroeconomic policy have on economic slowdown? Thank you. Uh, 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 Matt uh, Friedman, that great economist in the United States, used to say there's nothing like no policy. Uh, you can't say if government is doing, some, it's doing something, that is a policy. If they're not doing anything as well, that is a policy. If they're printing money, that's a policy. If they're not printing money, that's a policy. So, sound macroeconomic policy are meant to on the slow on economic slowdown are meant to like, you know, you 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 take up that economy because when we have economic slowdown, most likely there will be unemployment, and most likely prices could be falling, and if there is unemployment. The disposable income of people drops. And when it drops, it has a feedback effect. Because company cannot produce. As they cannot produce, they sack people. But the people they sack, they cannot buy anything. That is kind of huge effect on the people, on the economy, and everything just slows down. At a point, what you need to do is kind of government intervention. Like... Uh, 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 Keynes talked about, you know, during depression, some people believe no economy, the classical economists believe, don't worry, if there's a slowdown, things will balance out, everybody will adjust. It will, but Keynes said, no, you don't need to do this because things may not balance out. Before things balance out, it could be in the long run. In the long run, we are all dead. So, sound macroeconomic policy will ensure one, number one, government, uh, people start employing Go and uh, factories start producing, and when they start producing, they employ more people. And when they employ more people, people will have more income. As people have more income, they spend, they continue to spend on the economy. So, if 
micro if if a sun microeconomy policy is not affected immediately a recession can lead to a depression so that is that everything is about timing as well you want to quickly respond to ensure that a slowdown does not turn to a depression according to former president of the united states uh reagan he said recession recession is when you <laughs> jokingly said recession is when your neighbor loses his job depression is when you lose yours both of you are now out of job so sand economic policy will take economy back on the trajectory of growth solid and positive growth people will come back to work factory will be booming manufacturing uh, serving, uh, services the manufacturing sector will be producing factor of production people will, you know a lot of things will be happening so that effect is huge and effect on it is to ensure that the economy goes back or even beyond where it was before because a slowdown means something was off before and it's and we have a slowdown now to get back to the slowdown and even exceed the slowdown you need solid microeconomic policy and they come most times through government direct intervention government can give some government can select some industries and give them some uh, uh low income uh, sorry low uh interest rates you understand some select some some selected industry they can give them grants and they can also and go give some people tax holidays they can cut taxes during that time you are supposed to cut you don't tax when there is economic slowdown you know you're not supposed to be taxing poverty so you tax you you reduce the tax when you do the tax they have more money to invest in capital in capital investment and when they do capital investment they employ more people so government involvement during slowdown is huge and it comes through sound microeconomic policy as you have said and majorly through intervention multiple approaches will come into play for the economy to continue on its good trajectory mm. now in other words both um directly or indirectly those are the ways that governments can influence this macroeconomic policy yes okay are you are you trying to confirm what i said or you asked another question yes, i'm trying to ask you a question like in other words these are the ways that because yes. my question is that can go how what are the ways that government can influence economic activities directly or indirectly and you've okay. been mentioning you've been talking about government and all of that so i'm trying to say that in other words all that you've mentioned could be um it could be the answer to this question or are there other things that you think governments directly or indirectly are, are, can do to influence the economic activities yeah yeah so yeah you're you right thank you so let me add more yes those are the key areas but let me just add more the direct direction for instance what during an economic slowdown companies are not producing or they're not they're not producing the way they should produce so they cut that so most times those companies they could have serious debts that they cannot service with their present condition government can now kind of talk to the banks to like reschedule their loan probably extend it you understand to extend it to give them some kind of moratorium indirect so the existing debt will be serviced at a, a less stringent conditions number two that's a kind of indirect direct government can give loans to company through banks again you know low interest low interest uh, uh, loan to those companies that is also a form of direct government can also grant subsidies to people you understand they can grant subsidies they can grant uh, they can give grants to schools to to, to do more of a, uh, a research and development so those are the other thing government can do and most time too government will directly intervene by even giving money to the look at what the united states did and you know did some what we call transfer and that's the government was transferring money to people directly during covid that is a direct intervention i think giving money directly to people 
or they would do what we call the fellow, they would do like uh, the company that cannot pay their salary, it was okay for the next six months, we'll pay, we help you pay 50% of your salary. So it's just to ensure that they come back. Because when somebody is down, look at somebody, somebody is down, he needs kind of help to get up. His immunity is down. His defense system is weak. You need to help him up or her up to get stabilized. So you start feeding him. You start feeding him. Number one, the direct is that you, di you directly intervene in his life by feeding him, giving him some kind of uh, vitamins. Another indirect is that you put him in a nice environment where he can receive fresh air. Do you get? So as time goes on, the person starts working, you know, he's getting his balance back. He can walk, do some physio. Gradually, gradually, he will be on his own. He will need more a care worker. Then everybody will be fine. The purpose of raising that person up is that the person still have a lot of things to offer in the world. You know, they say we are still alive. There is hope. The person could be one of one of, could be one of the best neurosurgeons in the future. It could be one of even if he's not, you know, he just wanted to ensure that this person continues to live. He has something. To, the same thing happens with an economy. When an economy is down, economy can into, directly intervene, pumping money into the economy. They can also come through indirectly by cutting tax. You know, when they cut tax, they also make money. Uh, so the government got uh, that with more money for the government uh, for the company to uh, for the for the industry to spend for that is for the company they create more public utility they can do something like that then they give grants to small businesses like uh, smes because one of the problems of smes is access to finance affordable finance because you can have finance that is not affordable so access to affordable finance they can okay small companies come and take this loan don't okay we want to give you loan hybrid 50% grants, but 50% this low interest. Those are the intervention. And that is one key way government can uh, intervene and, uh, approve, and and ensure that the slowdown does not lead to depression. Thank you so, so much for that. Do you have any final word? Yes, yeah, so the, 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 the key thing is that everything centers on economic policy an economic policy environment. Economic policy, economic policy environment. Uh, Rodrigo Dumbuch, late now, used to say something like, which countries can afford to waste resources? Poor country cannot. Sound microeconomic policy are very needed and they should be evidence based. Policy should be evidence based, not on ASA. Data backed. You don't just, okay, what is the imp impact of this? And the policy will also have when are we measuring the impact? If what we aim at from the beginning do not give us what we want, what can we do? So for emerging markets, for developing countries like Nigeria, like, uh, even developed countries like United States, they also need, they also require solid microeconomic policy. But it's more, more key, it's very key for developing an economy. When you have solid microeconomic policy, then outsider will come and invest. You know, one thing is that if you have, you want to spend $1 billion and you only have $500 million domestically, if you have solid policy, you can invite foreigners to come and give you the remaining 500. They can even afford to give you more than 500. They can give you additional 1 billion. It is your policy. So policy can either destroy an economy or can also make an economy great. Everything rises and falls on economic policy. Economic policy in the environment that the policy is taking place and the policymakers. Thank you so, so much for that. It was actually a great time discussing with you. Thank you very much. Yeah. I appreciate it. And to you all there, thank you too for being part of the show. I know that um, you've learned one or two things. Remember that economic, a solid economic policy can always and always help a, an economy to progress. And a very bad one is a blow to the economy. Until next time when I come your way again for yet another exciting topic.
Take care and have a good day.